Right, this panel's complete. Now, because I'm butting this panel up to this one here, um, this is basically what the panel's going to be, this piece of timber here. The cladding has got to work its way all the way to the end. So what I've done to mimic this piece here is screw a piece on the end here and then I'll bring my boarding out to the end like that and then that will just sit over and lap to this corner. Now because this um, timber panels sit straight on top of brickwork, we've got to put some sort of damp proof layer in. So all I've done here with my stapler is nail on some damp proof course, uh, staple on some damp proof course, and that'll stop any damp penetrating the panel. So as you can see on this one I've already done, it's down here. So that panel's complete, next job is to get it stood in. So one thing to think about when you're doing this cladding, uh, this feather edge boarding, is that if you're using the nail gun, which I am, this is it's quite a sort of unwieldy beast, and when you're firing them in uh, 
n normally it's okay but when you get to the end of the board if you're not careful it can split them out so what i do on the ends here is i've just got a i think a three mil drill bit in the end of my drill and i drill each end and then um just nail it up fixing and it doesn't split okay so um i've laid a few pa panels on here uh, a few courses on here of feather edge and i, I just want to uh, talk about a little sort of tip or a little thing to keep your eye on if you're doing feather boarding like this so as i said earlier my, my first course i put on and that sort of went with the brickwork so this brickwork's got a slight dip in it so we've let that go with the brickwork and then I snapped a line for my second course. Um, and then consequently, each time I've used the stick and that's my gauging stick. And technically, because the first course was a straight course, this one here, uh, we know that if we just keep gauging each time, it'll be right. However, with the best one in the world, if you get some of this timber that's got quite a big bow on it, or you just slip here and there, you can easily gain a couple of mil here and there. So what I do every now and again is I check. Um, so I measure back to the second course, which is our datum, so to speak. And if I then measure to the bottom of the, the last course we've done, we've got 10.32 there. And if I check it in the middle, we've got sort of 10.38. So clearly there, we've crept a little bit. Now normally on a timber structure like this where there's no windows or anything it doesn't really matter if you creep a few mil but if I was gauging this um, so that I had a full course of across the top of a window rather than a cut it would matter because it's, it's much more important that it's in the right place so what I've done to correct this is basically gauge out put, put a mark with your gauging stick uh, and that, that gives you a measurement here then what you do is take the measurement, you then t record that measurement from the second course, which you know is right. And then take the same measurement again from that second course and put the same measurement on the other end. And then, as I've done here, you snap a line all the way along. Then you know that you're back on track and that that course will be straight. Uh, there is, it isn't an accident. That I've done it at sort of by the time this is on the wall it'll be um, sort of five and a half feet up and there isn't an accident why I've done it at five and a half feet because this is the course that's most or these courses from here up are the courses that are most likely to catch your eye if you're looking at it so once this panel stood up this this course here will be about between between five and and between five foot up so it really does want to be straight because that's the one that's likely to catch your eye and if it's a bit up and down you're going to see it so just another little tip there there we go so we've got all three sides up now and secured together um, next job is to put another plate on the top so we've got a double plate uh, brace this front and then have a look at marking out the roof we'll just have a quick look at this corner back here so as I explained earlier about putting that dummy piece on and boarding over to it and then taking it off what that's enabled now is that corner to meet perfectly both sides so then I'll just put my uh, soldier corner piece up there that'll um, bring both of those in together Right, I've actually um, changed my mind. I'm not going to um, put this second roof plate, uh, wall plate on to start the roof. I'm actually going to attach the thing down um, just in case, although it's fairly heavy, just in case the wind gets up, it could uh, take this off for a trip. Um, so what we're going to do, because there's only sort of one, two courses of brickwork there, we obviously can't just put a sort of standard fissure fixing down into that brickwork because um, it would, it would potentially pull that off. So what we're gonna do, what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to drill 
a hole right down through the plate into this block work, which is a good sort of almost 300 mil below the plate line. And then what I'll do once I've drilled it out with this 14 mil drill bit, is I should then drop um, some lengths of 12 mil threaded bar in there, um, resin, put some resin in there first and resin anchor it down. So what I've done here, again, another little tip is, I've drilled, if you see, I've drilled a hole uh, over a perpendicular joint. Um, and this um, is just because there's only one or two courses of brickwork. Um, if you're, there's a potential, if you're rattling away in the middle of the brick, you could then make this brick come loose. So going through the perpendicular joints obviously makes an easier path for the drill bit. Um, and then obviously less chance of uh, loosening the brick. So I'm going to start drilling those out now. Right, so now these holes are drilled, um, we've now got to clean them out. Now, a little bit of a background into why I've got a compressor. Um, a lot of people that uh, use um, cordless uh, nail guns for their second fix, but I've always used air-powered ones. It means you can have two or three um, different gauge guns running off um, you know, one compressor. It is a bit cumbersome and you do have to have a flex attached to it. But outside of that, you get uh, you also get this air compressor that you can do other things with. Um, so, for instance, you can you know blow up tires, or you have an air duster to clean your tools down. But something that I find very useful is this long reach air duster here that I've um, put a, an extension tube on. So this will allow me to get right down in the bottom of that hole and uh, clean it out and ready for the resin to go in. So let's go. Right now the holes are all drilled and cleaned out. I'm going to put some resin in, put that down there, probably give it maybe a couple of big pumps. Get that resin down to the bottom of that hole. Push the stud in. Yeah, you can feel the resistance as it's pushing its way into that resin. And it's right down to the bottom. There. Right, these studs are in now and the resin's had time to go off. nowhere. 